There are few actors out there who have been able to capture the public's attention across so many different decades in the same way that John Travolta has. And that's because, whether it be his early star-making work in the 70s and 80s, his career revival in the 90s, or his later performances in the 2000s and beyond, he's always entertaining. But with almost 100 screen credits to his name, the question of where to start with his filmography can be a tough one. And that's why we've narrowed it down to 10 of what we feel best represent his wonderful career. In this list, we'll be taking a look at the top 10 John Travolta movies of all time. Well, this car could be systematic, hydromatic, ultramatic. Number 10, A Civil Action. I mean, I can appreciate the theatrical value of several dead kids. I mean, I like that. Obviously, that's good. That's all this case is going for. While it may not be the first movie which comes to mind when thinking of John Travolta's filmography, 1998's A Civil Action is one of his best regardless. But given the fact it tells the true tale of a contaminated water supply wreaking havoc on the locals of Woburn, Massachusetts, a deft touch was always going to be required. So, luckily, Travolta is there to anchor the whole thing as Jan Schlickman, a lawyer seeking to help the families of those affected most by the fallout. Of course, without spoiling anything, he has to undergo many struggles of his own here. And all of this leads to him acting alongside Kathy Bates in the final scene, with this being the second time he would co-star with her that very year. Has any member of your family had any illness out of the ordinary? They think it's the water. Number 9. Primary Colors John Travolta was a busy man in 1998 because, aside from playing a defense attorney desperate to bring about justice in a civil action, he would also get to sink his teeth into the role of presidential candidate, Jack Stanton, in primary colors. And over the course of this one, we get to see our hero rise from the position of governor of Arkansas all the way to the White House. That said, while some actors may have struggled to portray such an epic journey, our lead is able to do it with ease here. In fact, so good would he be that, not long after the film was released, then U.S. President Bill Clinton would actually invite him to attend one of his parties in character as Jack Stanton. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something really outrageous. I'm going to tell the truth. Number 8. Hairspray I'm so sorry. I'm not. You're not? I'm proud of you. You are? Maybe somebody had to do something. While it was first brought to life by John Waters in 1988, and then reimagined again as a hit Broadway show in the early 2000s, it wasn't until 2007 that Hairspray reached a whole new audience. And that was because this time, the tale of a teenage girl using her fame as a dancer to break down racial boundaries finally got the big budget treatment. Of course, with a big budget also came bigger name actors, such as John Travolta in the role of Edna Turnblad, the mother of our hero. And in order to portray this role, Travolta would have to appear in drag during all his scenes. But this would be far from just a dash of eyeliner and a dress because, in order to get ready every morning, he'd have to spend four hours in the makeup chair. Wake up, Han. Wake up. Everything's good again. <gasps> Wilbur! Wilbur! <laughs> Number 7. Saturday Night Fever We just washed the hair. You know, I work on my hair a long time, and you hit it. He hits my hair. Before 1977's Saturday Night Fever hit screens, John Travolta was just another struggling young actor looking for his big break. After people got a chance to see this one, however, it quickly skyrocketed him towards superstardom. And that's because he excels here as Tony Manero, a working-class Italian-American kid who finds an escape from the drudgery of daily life in the world of disco dancing. Of course, this one would also make stars out of the Bee Gees, as they'd be the ones to create the movie's iconic soundtrack. And so seriously would Travolta take both their music and his role here, he'd at one point actually threaten to quit when the studio almost didn't let him dance to You Should Be Dancing without use of a body double. Hey, come on! Uh, go, go. Hey, come on! Hey, don't eat the apple! Give me, give me back! Give me yeah. Jesus, what's the matter with you, anyway? Number 6. Get Shorty Now, I've been shot up before. Once by accident, twice on purpose. And I'm still here. And I'm gonna be here as long as I want. The mid-90s were a time when John Travolta was undergoing something of a career renaissance. So, taking this and running with it for all it was worth then, he'd be able to secure the role of mobster, Chili Palmer, in 1995's Get Shorty. And this would see him get to play things up for laughs for a change as he goes from the mob world to the movie one, all while trying his best to adapt to his new surroundings as he starts a career as a producer. That said, initially, he wasn't sure about taking the role at all. 
No, in the end, he'd only be convinced to do so after Quentin Tarantino called him at home and told him he'd be crazy not to. But you won't know where I am. I mean, I don't even know where I'll be. I'll find you, Leo. You leave a trail like a fucking caterpillar. Number five, a love song for Bobby Long. It seems hard to believe that you haven't seen a man naked before. An old one. While he may be better known for playing showier roles, John Travolta is perfectly capable of turning it down and giving a quiet performance whenever he needs to. And nowhere is this more evident than in his portrayal of the titular character in 2004's A Love Song for Bobby Long. Why is that? Well, Bobby Long is presented to us as a man who, while once a successful literature professor, has fallen on hard times and has now resorted to basically squatting in a dead woman's house. Of course, given how well he was known for his singing skills in prior roles, director Shani Gabel couldn't help herself from having Travolta deliver some vocals here too. And that's what led to him giving haunting renditions of folk standards, Barbara Allen, and I really don't want to know. And he was buried there beside her, and from his grave. Red. Number four, Grease. Danny? <laughs> That's my name. Don't wear it out. What's the matter with you? <laughs> What's the matter with me, baby? What's the matter with you? <laughs> if you ask a hundred people what the most iconic John Travolta role of all time is, there's a good chance the majority would say it's his turn as Danny Zuko in the 1978 mega hit Grease. And that's because here he got to do it all by singing, dancing, and charming his way into the hearts of audiences all around the world. Of course, this, combined with the work of his co-star, Olivia Newton-John, would go on to turn the flick into the highest grossing musical of all time upon its release. And even to this day, its cultural footprint is so strong, you can't go to a wedding or a family gathering anywhere without having a few of those hits played on the dance floor. That said, one of the biggest of these hits, Grease Lightning, almost wasn't sung by Travolta at all. No, originally, it was meant to be performed by Jeff Conway's character, only for this to be changed at the last minute when it was deemed a better fit for Danny. We did not go together, Sandy. We just went together. That's all. It's the same thing. N no, no, no. Number three, face off. <laughs> Can you say you're sorry? I'm sorry. I didn't hear. It. I'm sorry. I mean it. I'm so sorry. Sometimes when you sit down to watch a movie, you want high art. Other times, though, you just want big, stupid fun, and few other action movies of the era provide this more successfully than 1997's Face Off. And sure, a large part of this is because of the brilliantly unhinged performance from Nicolas Cage. But without John Travolta there to play off him in the tale of a cop and a criminal who switch faces, it wouldn't have been the same. Why is this? Well, so committed were the two to getting each other's mannerisms correct, they'd spent two full weeks together prior to filming, learning how to mimic each other perfectly. I don't know what I hate wearing worse. Your face or your body. Number two, Blowout. Embarrass his family. What do you want me to do? Just say she wasn't there? I mean, uh, I already told the police. That's already taken care of. Over the years, John Travolta's star power has seen him get to work with a who's who of great directors. But for all that's made of his work with the likes of Quentin Tarantino, it often goes forgotten that he also had a starring role in Brian De Palma's 1981 cult classic, Blowout. What was the story of this one? Well, taking direct inspiration from 1966's Blow Up, it explores the character of Jack Terry, a sound effects technician who inadvertently captures audio evidence proving the assassination of a prominent U.S. politician. Needless to say, then, what follows is a tense thriller as our hero gets dragged deeper into the conspiracy behind the crime. And Travolta's downtrodden and paranoid performance here is only helped by the fact that, throughout the shoot, he was suffering from insomnia and so couldn't get any sleep. They have erased my tapes, they've made you disappear, and next it's gonna be me. But I'm not disappearing, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I am. Our number one pick is Pulp Fiction. Mom's a word. Cool. Now if you excuse me, I'm gonna go home and have a heart attack. Not only is 1994's Pulp Fiction the greatest John Travolta movie of all time, you could make a solid argument that it's the greatest movie of all time outright. But given how pitch perfect every scene is in this one, that shouldn't be a controversial statement. Of course, while there's a variety of different characters across different crime-centered stories here, the star of the show is really Travolta's hitman for hire, Vincent Vega. In fact, so great and so iconic of a performance he would give here, it would entirely revive his career with general audiences after years of him being considered washed up. And it would also put him back in the good graces of critics, too, because this would mark his second Academy Award nomination for Best Actor, with his first having been way back at the start of his career when he starred in Saturday Night Fever. 
Looking at the film's ratings, we find that Pulp Fiction received a great 8.9 out of 10 on IMDb.com and an even better 94 from Metacritic. As for Rotten Tomatoes, they'd give it 92% on the tomato meter, with an even more impressive 96% given by the audience. I think we should be leaving now. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. And there we have it, the top 10 John Travolta movies of all time. No doubt you have your own list, so be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and get alerted of our next video. We'll hope to see you soon!